What is going on, Gulf Coast Nation? Guys, welcome back to another episode. This week, I'm in the truck traveling, and this is a spot we fished before, and in past times, we didn't have to drive quite as far, but thanks to Hurricane Sally and the company who has done construction on Three Mile Bridge, Three Mile Bridge is no longer travelable travel able to be traveled on across anyways so we have to navigate out and around all the way almost to Navarre to get to Pensacola but it's a weekday Adam's got high school senior year he's got a lot on his plate right now between running a business closing out a senior year he's got finals this week so he is not able to come with us because it is a weekday so I'll be running solo for a little bit tonight and then we have a special guest meeting up with us that you guys have seen on this channel. So let's get out to the beach, let's get set up, let's get some big horses on the beach. Phew! Alrighty, got the camp set up here, got both rods set up. I'm only going to run two rods right now until Spencer gets here tonight. That is our secret guest, Mr. Spencer Wonder. Previous couple weeks ago, we had him out on the beach for two epic episodes. He's driving all the way back from California to come meet up with us again. So he's going to be here like in the morning at like 2 or 3 a.m. And apparently when he gets here, he's going to run bait. So I'll uh, fill you guys in on that. But the sun has just dropped below the horizon. Just got everything set up. We got both of our baits ready. So let's get him out there. Yo! Alrighty, well, I uh, just had a visit from old county sheriff and uh, he came out here and told me that it's a, uh, apparently the road I'm on right now is closed. So I didn't know the road was closed. There was a little barricade in the road down there and I just went around it. There was no sign saying that, that it was closed out here, but uh, I guess that barricade in the road represented a road closure. Uh, I, I figured there was just a pothole or something that they were marking, but after getting these baits out that I'm going to have to pack up and set up west of those barricades. All right, checking in with you guys about two hours later. Um, I talked back and forth a little bit with Spencer. He's still on the road. And we came to the conclusion that we'd go ahead and drive back over to Navarre. So driving another hour down the road to Navarre. Um, but we have better parking situation over here, better access, and since he's staying for a couple days, um, it's just going to work out better to fish over here like that. So, I just got to the parking lot in Navarre. It's about 9 o'clock. Spencer's going to get here about 4.30 now, 4.30 a.m., since we're, he's having to drive a little bit further. I'm just going to hang out in the truck until they get here, and then... When they get here, we'll be able to go read the bars a little bit with the rising sun. We'll be able to set up our spread where we want it to. That way, you know, we have a more efficient couple of days. Probably take a little bit of a snooze. Um, sorry, the beginning of this video has been so slow. I feel like it's been a lot of ups and downs, but like maybe an hour worth of soaking bait. So a little frustrating, but... This is shark fishing, and I want to take you guys along with these adventures, even the ones that don't go like you planned. So, I'll see you guys in the morning. You. Oh my gosh. All right. 5.30. I'm gonna hold this. Ooh, I can't even. 5.30 in the morning. Spencer and his guests are about to pull up. I'm gonna go back here, get some of my stuff unloaded. That way when they pull up, I can help them get unloaded. And then we're gonna hit the beach as planned. Just had a little bit of a delay yesterday, but no big deal. Gonna make it happen. You. All right, let's get the gear down there. almost all the way set up. The sun has came to say hello. Let's check out the camp, then we'll get baits out.
we take our baits out, I wanted to go over our leaders with you guys. Today we're gonna be running two style of leaders, all right? Spencer has so nicely brought us some float rigs, which is a West Coast style leader that we're gonna be using in the panhandle today. As you can see, these rigs are really simple. They've got one main line that runs all the way to the weight with a free sliding swivel. That's going to be your suspended float rig. That bait's gonna dangle around six, eight feet. He's made these yep. right here for the Gulf Coast. So those are available on terraformatackle.com. Jump on there and get them. They are great for wintertime fishing in the Gulf Coast. Don't use them in the summertime. You're just gonna catch a bunch of boats and that's gonna make people not happy. And tempers, and a ton of tempers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're fantastic for the wintertime sharks, duskies, makos, tigers, sandbars, all that good stuff. And as you guys know, nothing, nothing special here. Gulf Coast Nation rig, right? No! These are now available on terraformatackle.com. We have partnered up with Terraferma. They are making Gulf Coast Nation panhandle style rigs. They got the best components that you can have, right? They got the Terraferma Tackle weights. These things stick like a dream in some of the biggest ways that you're gonna see here on the Gulf Coast, as well as sandbar tackle hooks. It comes as a complete kit. All you have to do is attach your main line to the end swivel on the rig, clip your weight on, and you're ready to go fishing. No guesswork. No rig design, no thinking, That's tie, right. bait, go fishing. That's right. Jump on the website, get these things ordered, and stop taking, take all the guesswork out of what you're doing out here. Start putting fish on the beach. Ew. Tis the evening time with nothing to show for the daytime besides some good looking waves and a good scenery, but nothing much happening today. Um, we weren't really suspecting a bunch to happen due to the tide and winds but we're hopeful for the evening time as well as through the night as well as through the morning so the one thing you can control land-based shark fishing wise is keeping your baits fresh freshen everything up for the evening time right before the sun sets that way we can be in the right spot for a good evening bite Pew! Spencer. Yeah, he's off. Picked up. You. down, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Get him pin. Ready to get my waiters? Yeah. All right. Be my first fish on this one. What? Yeah, beach bum. You got it. We got two fly fights. I'd get the reel on it. All right, back in mono. Back in mono. Thinking it's a sandbar. I hope I'm surprised when it hits the surf. But it's been a while since I've got to be in the harness person. So. Go ahead, go ahead. 
Tail slapper, he won't go. You <laughs> 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 waiting good? Yeah, they do. Not quite the species we're after, but a nice little sandbar there. We got him in quick. Got him out quick. It's nice little change of pace from today because we've been staring at rods all day. But shark number one on the beach. I'm about to get in the waders, re bait. Let's see if we can't get a bigger one. It's uh it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm trying to keep my eyes open, but I can't. So it's 2.30 in the morning, I set an alarm. The only thing we've got so far is that sandbar shark. And uh, we're going for a little 2.30 a.m. bait change with a, uh, with a wind switch we're having this morning. So about to jump out in the kayak, 2.30 in the morning, and uh, change the baits out. Sometimes you gotta work hard to, uh, to make sure you put big fish on the beach. So let's get these baits changed. Yo! Two thirty AM. See y'all when we get there. We need to head going out. We're just gonna Mr. Crabby boy. Now all we gotta do is wait for the sun to come up. You All right, a little morning bite this morning on the float bait. I think it's another sandbar. It's way out there, but it's not fighting very hard. So. Looks like the bait change at 2.30 paid off. Ooh, ooh. Right there. Uh-oh. It grew! <laughs> we just had a fish kind of grew a little bit on, so a little bit more aware. I'm so glad I was not. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I see mono. I got mono on the reel. Woo! Oh. Please, dude. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. That's crazy. He just came and stuck his head up again. Oh, no, the tail's wrong. Is it? I'm going to go to the light, so I can't see the color, but it might be a dusty. Tail's right. I'm trying to tell you. Unless you've got the tail's right. Unique tiger. I'm calling it. What? <laughs> on, wait on this? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You just bump it up a little bit. If it breaks off, it's not the end of the world. 
Yeah. Yeah, good Are you freaking him. Are you freaking serious? Yeah. All right, all right. Absolutely. Right. Tail we, rope, tail rope. Oh my gosh. All right, let's close this out, man. Let's close this out. No freaking way, guys. Boys! Boys, no! 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 Come on! Let's freaking go! Yes, sir! I even know, I even know what to say. Normally, normally in these audio sessions talking with you guys, I have all my words planned out, thought out, but this fish has literally made me speechless right now. This is a fish that we have been chasing for right around five, six years. And uh, the last few years, we've gotten really close. We've been with some guys that have got them. We've been around guys that got them. Last winter, I told you guys that we would get another shot of the Mako. And uh, this morning, on the terra firma tackle float rig. We got her done, she smoked it. I was snoozing, the guys in the camp said, hey, I think that reel's clicking. And uh, we uh, set hook on the deep drop, set in for a very long fight. And uh, to be completely honest with you guys, I love to hype this thing up that it jumped 90 times and it's everything I dreamed of, but we didn't ID it until it got in the surf. Bottom line, guys helped us out on the beach, got it, got it done, and, and there's a Mako right here. I hate that Adam wasn't here. He's, uh, like I said earlier, he's in school, so he has prior responsibilities, but I have a feeling he's in the truck on the way here right now. So, we, uh, we got it done. We got the Mako. Let's go. Woo! As always, it is a joy when we get to meet up with Terra Firma Tackle. Mr. Spencer is an awesome guy to fish with, very knowledgeable. Obviously, his float rig <laughs> did the trick. I mean, we had a nine rod spread last night, and this morning, the only one that got bit was that suspended bait on that Terra Firma Tackle float rig. So, I'm gonna link it in the description below like I have the last two weeks before. <laughs> and uh, go to their website, and like we've said, we said it, we said it last week. Yep. Take the guesswork out of what you're doing land-based shark fishing wise. Go pick up the leaders. They sell, they sell Gulf Coast Nation panhandle leaders now. And obviously the float rigs work for Makos in the panhandle area. Yeah. So if you want those pelagics, I don't care where you're fishing, you gotta get that bait off the bottom. Stop right. thinking like it's 1982 and you're reading the Texas Shark Fishing <laughs> Bible. Get your baits off the bottom. That's right. You'll have to change them last, you'll get more bites, and the fish you catch will be of significantly better quality. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All, all <laughs> kinds of pros. I mean, the bait's not getting crabbed because it's off the bottom, and we just put a Mako in the sand this morning. So, uh, shoot, I think that's gonna be it. We, uh, always, always a pleasure meeting of up course, with you, man. man. Yeah. That's it. You. In the truck now, checking in with you guys about an hour later after packing up, I have tried to take some time, kind of process everything that has just happened, and uh, you know, get get a little bit of a game plan to talk to you guys, to kind of share with you the experience that I just got to live. And uh, I'm telling you, 
I couldn't have said it better right there sitting behind that Mako that I'm I'm just speechless man I mean what what an amazing creature Makos are such a sought-after fish and they're very few and far between at a very specific time of year at the place we fish so I have been chasing this Mako this species for about six years now it's been a goal of mine probably number one fish on my bucket list and last year we had one of the biggest fishing heartbreaks of my life we lost a giant mako saw it jumping in the moonlight um, the whole nine yards rip and drag big fish and we lost it it popped off and uh, we were really just left with nothing but like the worst stomach feeling in the world like if you have not seen that video I'm gonna link it right here in the top right corner of your screen that is that is the low and this is the high I've talked about it with yak and with Jack before the lows and highs of shark fishing are what makes it so awesome I'm over the moon excited I I mean I it's like a life goal like I can't even, I can't even explain to you guys in words how hard I've worked for this fish and I hate that Adam wasn't there Adams worked his butt off for this fish too and, uh, but that's where I'm driving right now. We're gonna go process the uh, the Mako, get everything, you know, the meat done right. And uh, we'll put that in another video. But eight foot three is a really nice fish and uh, we'll be gunning for bigger ones in the future. We're gonna keep content coming. We're not done, but it's just nice to sit back, relax, and just mission accomplished. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, share with your friends, and as always, We'll catch you guys next week. You boom! Let's go! Ah, my gosh! I can't even tell you, man. Ah, I'm so hyped! I'm so hyped!